Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to tint the windows on your WRX. This is an entire DIY process. Don't leave yet. I know most of you guys say tinting windows is too hard and you're willing to pay someone, but let me convince you in three statements why you should watch the video and tint your own windows. One, I've seen enough tints in my time at car shows, communities, my own tints, everything, that like 40% of tints have the DIY mistakes that you could make if it's your first time tinting. Because our WRXs have such thick gaskets and the gaskets are black, they don't really, like, you can't really tell that they're there and you can hide them anyways. So most people, most like tint shops will just send the cars with them out that way. Secondly, you can tint all of your windows for about $100 and that's with the tools that you need to do it. And I promise you guys, it's actually not that hard to do and it's really fast. You can tint your entire car in like four or five hours if you're kind of going slow, listening to some music. And if you just want to tint the windows on your doors, it takes about three hours. Again, if you're going slow, listening to an audiobook, podcast, some music, I've actually tinted three of the windows so far in this car. I'm going to show you how to tint one of the windows because it's really the same single thing every single time. And I think it took me like two hours while I was listening to a new playlist playing it through my car in my very musty dungeony garage. And I promise guys, this is so easy to do. So I'm gonna show you everything you need. I'm gonna show you where to buy it, how much it's gonna cost. And I'm gonna show you guys how to tint your windows for like, I think under a hundred dollars. I bought the tint actually a long time ago, like maybe six months ago. So I don't exactly know how much it costs yet, but I'll post it on the screen. I'll post everything on the screen and links in the description. And I promise you guys, tint your own windows. It is so easy to do and I will prove it to you in this video. Really, it's cheap. It doesn't take much time and you can you can match like three out of three or four out of 10 shops quality most of the time. You'd be amazed how many, you know, like not perfect rounded corners and little jagged edges are hidden in the gaskets from shops where you're paying premiums. Lastly as well, unless you're paying top, top dollar and you know exactly what tint is going on your car, you're probably getting crappy tint anyways because most shops are just throwing the cheapest bulk volume deal of tint. So even with this $100, let's say, I bought, I'm putting on like the top end Avery Dennison tint. I'm actually going non-ceramic because I think I'm gonna go with a darker tint, but you could go ceramic too. But this is like their Avery Dennison ND. I, I've, I'll post it up what it is now. I don't exactly remember, but it has like, the best reviews. So I bought the most expensive, the most quality stuff, and that's going on your car. Let's get into it. Let me show you first what you're gonna need. The most important tool today, actually it's probably the squeegee, but we're gonna do a soapy water spray. So this is like three or four drops of baby soap. The reason I do with baby soap is it doesn't have any additives, fragrances, anything like that. You know, you can just do like a quick little squirt. Uh, lukewarm water, uh, really room temperature is fine. Just don't use cold water. Uh, well, you could use cold water, but I, cold water, warm temperature. We'll keep talking about prep. Um, some clay bar, this you don't have to buy the, I have like chemical guys clay bar and clay bar spray. You don't have to buy the expensive stuff. Some microfiber towels, this is all super cheap. I'll link some cheap options and some this exact product in the description. The last piece of prep is actually just a razor blade. I don't know, that's not gonna focus, but a razor blade, because you're gonna scrape the window down. And then your install stuff. You're gonna get a squeegee thing at Home Depot. You don't actually need the squeegee. Again, this is like, you could do it without the squeegee. This was $4 at Home Depot, just a window squeegee. You find it in the place where you clean, like the shower, like the uh, cleaning supplies. It's like a shower cleaning thing. Then these are your two most important tools. You can do everything with these two tools. You got a normal felt tipped squeegee. This is the same thing you would apply vinyl wrap on. Quality one of these. And a window seal, a window gasket tucker tool. Super inexpensive. And I lied to you guys, there's one more tool. It's in my pocket, forgot about it. And it is a knife. Now, the knife is very important. You must get a stainless steel knife and they're not that expensive, but what can happen is you can find one that's like a dollar cheaper. Do not buy it. I've bought mine specifically, hopefully that focuses, specifically through Avery Dennison. It's like a little knife thing here. It pops out like that. See that? It has removable, breakable blades that you can break off. You want a clean blade. If you don't buy a stainless steel knife, you will scratch your windows. We're not gonna use a test window here. I'm gonna show you how to do this all on your own window. No, do it at your own risk, but if you listen to what I say, you won't scratch your window. So quality knife. Again, this is from Avery Denson. Just spend a couple extra dollars and get the good stuff. You'll use it again. Other than that, let's get straight into it, guys. Oh, and you need a heat gun, but I have a heat gun. I'll show you guys. I'll put a heat gun in the description below. All you need to do is spend like 20 bucks on a heat gun, but we will use a heat gun 
Even though we bought pre-shrunk film, we're gonna shrink it again. All right, so don't worry, we're looking at the window from far away here. I will show you up close the little things that you need to focus on when you need to focus on it. But uh, because we don't have the tint on, and one of the main reasons I have, I'm putting tint on, is there's so much reflection and fishbowl-iness through the window. So it's hard to like even film unless you're in like, I don't know, it's hard to film this. So I'll show you guys, but you'll see everything you need to see. So we're gonna start with window prep. The tint goes on the inside of the window. We're gonna prep the outside of the window because we want a clean and sterile surface. So we're gonna start by just doing a quick spray down here. Quick spray down. We're spraying around the car. We're using our squeegee and we're just squeegeeing off to one side. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're basically prepping the surface for a clay bar. And then we're taking one of our microfibers that is going to be like the donor microfiber for uh, the dirty stuff and we're just wiping down the edges. Now, what I'm gonna do on this pass is I'm gonna wipe around the window as well. Any surface that your tent could touch, we're just trying to avoid the maximum amount of dirt being able to touch it. Now, still not perfect. We're not gonna over prep the exterior, but we're gonna just do a quick clay bar again. We're just trying to get the crap off the window. Outside, we're just hitting it with a little bit. This is because we are gonna be using the exterior to actually do our prep. And again, I'm not doing it a perfect thing. I'm just trying to get off any crap that might get stuck to the tent and I might carry over to the inside. And then ultimately, again, because it's this, like, you're not gonna get crap between the tent and the window. This is more so that you don't scratch the outside of the tent. If you have crap on it and then you squeegee the crap, it'll scratch the tent. So that's literally all I'm doing there. Gonna hit it with a quick squeegee. We're trying to get all that away. All right, so the exterior of our window is prepped. Now we're gonna jump to the interior. We're gonna do the same thing, and I'm hoping you guys can see me through. You can. Don't worry, we will flip the camera when we're installing. But I'm gonna do the same exact process, process except one more step. So I'm spraying the inside of the window here. Again, I'm not using a ton of water. Some people like to protect the, um, they like to protect the inside of their car. Honestly, it gets wet anyways if it starts raining. So you're not gonna do too much damage here. We're gonna clay bar. Now with our clay bar, we're gonna hit the bottom. We're gonna hit the sides. Then we're gonna do something very important. We're gonna drop the window a little bit and we're gonna clay bar our top. That's where you get a lot of grime and grit. You'll be surprised, a lot of crap will come off. Claber off to the side. And then this is almost the last time we're gonna use this specific towel because most of our dirt's off. So this is where we use our razor blade. I'm gonna do the same thing, but on the inside, I'm gonna razor blade it. So I'm gonna lubricate the surface with a sprayer. And you guys can see on the opposite side here. And I'm gonna take my razor blade and I'm just gonna gently razor blade it, uh, razor blade it clean. Now, it's important that you don't push too hard. You're not trying to scratch the glass, especially if there's curvature. All we're doing here is we're trying to get off areas that have gunk on them. The most important part here is, again, rolling down the window a little bit, making sure you're bringing up water. This new towel is gonna clean off the top, and there we go, we're clean. All right, we got our tent. So I bought a roll, I just cut off a long piece, I bought extra. You, with that $100, you can buy enough for extra. I'm just gonna spray this down. And without even looking at the tent first, we're gonna stick her on. We wanna always have a lubricated surface on the exterior. All right, so we're just gonna tack it a little bit. So this is where we gotta do a little bit of work here. So what's important is that you make sure that the film is on the backside and your clear protective layer is on the exterior. So you wanna be working on that clear protective layer. How do you know it's there? Well, you, you don't. So you take a piece of your tent and you cut it you cut it off and you know you make sure you cut like a square so you can put that square back on so you can tell and then you peel it until you figure out where the film is and where the protective layer is here we have the actual tent film the protective layer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to match this up to make sure it's on the outside of my little thing here you guys can't see that that's off camera i'm matching it up to make sure and that's telling me that the protective layer is on the outside. So I have this set up correctly. Now, I'm gonna teach you something here really quick with the film. So this is their film, and you have the sticky part, right? Sticky. And I have a fingerprint. So that's a problem. Whenever you remove this clear wrap, which we will do later, you need to spray this. One, so you don't leave a fingerprint. 
that fingerprint is never going away. That oil from your finger will remain in that tint film when you install it, whether there's liquid after it or not. So the second you peel this back, you're spraying it to lubricate the surface and create a barrier that's liquid between your skin and the oils from your skin and the car itself and anything that can come from the car. So the second this gets peeled, water, soapy water on this immediately. And we're just gonna tack it down again. We're just a, a light tack. This is just so it doesn't move as we begin to work with it. So we're just light, lightly tacked. You can have a gap around it, no problem. We're lightly tacked. Now, our goal is just to cut this film so it's a little bit closer to the car. So we can open the door back and forth and it's not gonna be a problem. So on the bottom, I'm actually not gonna do anything. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my tent up, pull my tent up, re-wet the bottom here. So I'm pulling my tent up until I have a straight line below the gasket on the exterior with the bottom. That's gonna create our straight line on the bottom and we're giving ourselves extra. So it should cover the exterior gasket, right? My tent runs below it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little further. I'm gonna pull it down a little past that gasket. I like to pull about a quarter inch. Then at the top, I'm just gonna roughly remove some of the top so we don't have too much working. But before I do that, because I'm focusing on filming, I'm just gonna tack us down again. I do not want this guy to move whenever I make cuts. So he's just roughly tacked down. And then I'm literally blades out a little bit, just removing some film so I can work with this a little bit better. A little bit of film gone. All right, another lesson before we keep going. If you cut film, ready? We're gonna cut it a little bit. So let's say you cut film. For, we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you this now because I'm not gonna tell you again every time I do it because it's easy. When you cut film, right? Let's say this is the film that you wanna keep on the car. Do not pull it straight down because you're never gonna make cuts where it's fully clean. Always pull away, right? If you pull away, it will take it away. If you pull it straight down, it will take it in. Always pull directly, always pull directly perpendicularly. Okay, we can throw that off to the side. We're also gonna shorten this. We're just gonna take some film off here. Same on the back. All right, so this is where it gets fun. We have a straight line lined up at the bottom, right? That's easy. Now, we're gonna have to cut out the film. So what we're gonna start by doing is we're gonna start by working on our longest side. The reason we're gonna do this is because it's the easiest one to mess up. Now, we're gonna use our blade here. Now, this is very important. And I'm actually gonna show you here is that without the blade, right? So imagine we have the, the, the blade out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna push our, our tent up into the exterior gasket and we're gonna put our blade in like this where the white is guiding it, right? You see the white is the guideline and we're just gonna use the exterior trim and the white and we're gonna push against it and we're gonna bring it all the way down, right? And we're not bringing it all the way down, we're getting to like here and then we're tearing it. We'll clean the corner up later, same goes here. We're gonna do the same thing here. But this trick is really important. So imagine I'm using my open window here right now, as you can see, we're pushing up against the gasket with the white and we're following the gasket. Now, you need to be careful. You don't wanna do this. You don't wanna go like that. Because if you go like that, you're gonna cut your gasket. We are literally bringing our blade out. Ready? One click. It's so little you can barely see it. You see that little bit of knife? One click and holding it in. And that one click is enough that if you put pressure on it like this and hold up against that gasket, it will cut. One click. Let's do it. So the most important thing here, guys, remember, is this thing does not move. So I'm spraying it down again. You wanna repeat the same things over and over again. This time, I'm gonna squeegee a little bit further out. I want the maximum possible tack here. I'm just getting as close to the corners, but you don't wanna go so far that you're creasing the, the uh, the tent. So here, one click. I'm using my fingers. I'm getting out to the edge of the thing, pushing it down, and I gotta focus here, guys. So exactly what I just showed you, using the, the gasket as a guide, and you're going down. Now, I've got my cut, right? My finger's underneath it. I haven't cut the bottom, I haven't cut the top already. First thing I do, Blade goes in, in the pocket. You don't want to accidentally cut something. We're gonna start at the bottom because that's our easiest one. I'm gonna lift the tent, 
and I'm going to tear away. Once you start your tear, you're good. This is the easiest place to mess up. I'm going to grab my top, and I'm going to tear away. So I've torn away. Look, you have this extra flap. I've torn away, so it's torn away. I'm going to cut that later. Don't sweat it. So you want extra room because you have a gasket on either side. It's got to go in. So I'm grabbing my tin from the top and the bottom. I'm lifting it, breaking the seal, and I'm pulling it up and over. I'm giving myself some room there. So I'm up and over. You can't, you don't want to go too far, but you want to go up and over like an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. I got my flap here, starting at the bottom. I'm pulling away, pulling away. Top, away. All right, so we've cut ourselves out. I'm now going to pull it back so that I have an equal extra spacing on either end. Equal extra spacing on either end. So it's going to be over the gasket a little bit on either end. That's how it is. Perfect. Here's where it's important. We're going to lift from the bottom. We're going to open our door. Right? We're keeping the bottom lifted. We're opening our door. We're dropping our window. If this is the top of our window, Ready, this is the top of our window. We're gonna knife on the window, knife on the window, and we're going across like that while putting pressure on the top of the window. This is a single continuous cut. If you stop, you gotta redo everything. Single continuous cut. Single t continuous cut, blade follows the window, we're pulling away. The one other thing you'll need for this is a ruler. We're gonna use this ruler to match our lines and cut the tent. Now, because I don't have nine hands, I have to do this without the camera, but what, what I'm going to do here is I've got my jagged edge here. I'm going to use my ruler to match up with the curvature of the window. Look, I've got my exposure here, and I'm going to cut that off. And I'm going to flip, match my tent. There we go. I'm going to cut that off, and then I've got a rounded edge. Now, or then I've got a perfect edge. Now it's gonna have a point. Some people will use their fingernail like this and cut around their fingernail around it. Doesn't even matter, honestly, you'll be really be able to notice. I'm gonna do that on all edges, you'll see. But I need to show you something first. Thing lesson, ready? So we're gonna go about this far out with our blade, that far out. We're going to break off a new piece, a new piece of the blade right here. We're gonna break it off so it's a fresh blade because this is where you can scratch your window. Once you get a fresh blade, you're gonna go this far. And then let's say this is the window, right? If this is the window, this is the window surface, ready? We're cutting the tent. If we go like this and cut, we scratch the window. If we go like this and cut, we scratch the window. If we go like this and cut, we scratch the window. If we go like this and cut, we scratch the window. If we go like this, very, very flat, and cut, no window scratch. That's because the blade is sharp on the long end and not on the tip. The tip is sharp but the tip will gouge. That's not focused. Hopefully it's focused now. The tip will gouge. So when you're cutting, one finger like that, very, very flat. You almost want the plastic. You want to be questioning whether the blade is making contact or the plastic, right? That little wobble. Just wobble enough so the blade's making contact. And cut. You won't scratch your window. Let me show you. Very, very flat. Not too much pressure. Throw the tip to the side. Line it up. The other thing, you do not need to use much pressure. It's very, very soft cutting. Blade goes into the pocket. We go to the next piece. But pre-shrunk film, but we're gonna shrink it anyways. What does shrinking mean? Shrinking means adding heat to the film. And this is more important the more curvature to your window you have. The WRX doesn't have crazy curvature. Pre-shrunk film, you could probably get away with it but shrinking avoids those little tendrils that need to get like squeegeed out that can cause a problem when you're doing your final installation. If you pre-shrink it, you don't get those tendrils of air, pockets of air that can crinkle the, you know, when you're doing the install. Now, not too much heat, just a little bit. There's gonna be a period here where you're gonna look at my back. I promise I will fix the camera, but we're gonna take this off and apply it to the underside to the other side of the window. I need to be super careful here because I will mess up if I'm not focusing. So you guys are gonna have to bear with me for like the 10 second transition where you're looking at the back of my head, so I apologize. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our tent and we're gonna put it on, on the inside here. This is the final step 
Everything we've done so far, easy. This is the point where you can mess up. That's why you buy a little bit extra wrap or a little extra tint film in case you mess up. I buy usually two windows worth. It's not that expensive to do. Um, still under $100, I'm pretty sure. And then, uh, so we're gonna remove our, our clear wrap and then we're gonna remove the bottom for like six inches and then we're gonna use it to slide on the other side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll my window back up to the top. Remember the rule of thumb here? Water immediately. Not touching it either. We're using the film to get the film up. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna roll a clear protective layer. Stick that guy on. Wrap it down to the side. All right, you're gonna get a good view of my head here as we're working. It's not the perfect view, but tight garage. I apologize, guys. All right, so basically what you're looking at here is you're looking at the film going over. We basically rolled it off. It's not fully peeled off this piece here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to tuck underneath our bottom gasket here. Or you can use this lovely tool here just to lift the gasket all the way across. And we're just gonna start sliding our film down and in, and then it's all gonna happen kind of at once where we get the top in too. Spray again, lower our window a little bit. And what we're doing here is we're just maneuvering it around. We want a slight gap at the top, like a very, very small gap, like we're talking like half a centimeter, just enough to give some space. That's the industry standard. And then once we get that gap there, we're gonna lubricate the exterior of our window. This is where we don't wanna have scratches. And we're gonna use our felt tip squeegee. I'm just gonna go like this. You can change your felt. I'm just making sure there's no abrasions on it and I'm gonna start pushing some water out up to the top. I'm tacking the top of the window here. That's because my top is perfect. And the bottom, and I'm just starting to get that water evenly out here. And we're gonna keep squeegeeing the water down. I'm gonna re-lubricate again. Just don't wanna scratch the inside of my film. If you wanna take this and just dry off your car a little bit. That's fine too. And then we're literally just getting our water out. We're going straight down for now. You can go down and out if you want. And uh, we're basically done, if you can believe it. Do one more pass here, just to get the bubbles out. And our next step is we're just gonna apply a little heat, first with the window like this, and then with the window down a little bit. But just so I can see, this is where I'm gonna reach over Try off the other side. We're just heating this up just a little bit. It's nothing crazy. We're just trying to get some of the water out. This is where you want to check your work on the inside. I've already checked my work. You also want to check your work on the outside, up of the gaskets. I actually didn't do that just to make sure you have good bondage. I do. And there's one thing. So you'll notice that there are going to be like little bubbles almost. It's actually just liquid that's stuck under there that your felt tip can't get out. You shouldn't try to get it out it will come out over time. Like if you go to a tint shop, they will tell you it takes like almost two to three weeks of sunlight and some long-term heat to get that liquid out. And that's the reality. So to be honest with you guys, after doing this window, I would say that this window is probably one of the better windows I've done, honestly. I don't see any imperfections on this window. So I would say this is probably a shop grade installation. I mean, obviously I DIY'd it. So everyone that owns the shop is gonna be at me at the get-go. But I'm just saying from an installation period, for my installation, it's pretty good actually. Um, there's nothing noticeable wrong with it. Uh, again, it takes two or three weeks for those little bubbles of water and air to get out of here. Eventually, the film is designed for it to come out over time with some UV rays and some heat and some sunlight. So that's basically the last thing you need to do. And that's tinting your windows on your WRX. That's literally all you have to do. It's super easy. Uh, you could probably do your, based on this window with me explaining everything I'm doing, you could probably do your entire car in like four and a half, five hours. 
but if you weren't explaining what you're doing and you're just in the groove like I was with all the other windows, it goes by very quickly. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll have links to everything you need to know. Otherwise, good luck tinting your windows. Definitely DIY it, and I'll see you in the next video.